moment of the death on Good Friday in the church is one of great hollowness and serenity for the church. We feel the lifelessness of the Christ as he is taken down from the cross, lying dead in the arms of his mother. We feel the desolation of the Christ as all his disciples have left him, save John and a few of the holy women. We feel the Christ taken by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus and put into the hollow tomb. We feel the stone being rolled away to the front of the tomb and there the drama appears to be ended. But like a great symphony of music, this drama is not finished. We have moved from the first movement of the symphony where the themes are declared into the second movement where there is a certain sense of tranquility but expectancy. And now we move into the third great movement where all the themes come together and are about to explode into the final great crescendo. And now let us move back to the altar of God and there recount from Holy Scripture the first moments of that first day of the week. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. And they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about the head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which first came to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the other disciple went away again, and they went to their own homes. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head, and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. This is the moment when the drama rarely unfolds. There is a silence and the quiet of the early morning, with just this figure of Mary Magdalene in the garden. There is the ecstasy of the moment as Jesus reveals himself to her and this new act of creation, resurrection, takes place. In the church, this is probably the most splendid of all days as we have moved from the silence and the mourning of the tomb now to the bursting out of new life. This is seen so perfectly in the lily. The lily which was the flower that Jesus alluded to himself. Now we see her arrayed like Solomon was never arrayed in all his glory. The lily that decorates the church so beautifully that bursts out from the altar telling us of new life. The lily which 
is the moment of resurrection and the flower of resurrection. We have moved from fawn to lily. And now let your eye just move over the lilies and feel and breathe in the moment of new life as Christ is risen, risen for all mankind. The tomb is burst, death is overcome. Ellington can tell us a lot about the old practices in the Jamaican countryside. Can you share some of your memories about Easter with sure, us? Sure, sure. Well, what comes to mind first is a resurrection lily. Uh -huh. And I know it's in other parts of Jamaica, but I first saw it in Northwest Bourne, and we had beds of this thing under the two tangerine trees that we had next to the house. And it's sort of a popped out of the ground uh -huh. at Easter time. They are tubers, right? Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't see anything of them at all mm -hmm. before Easter. And the foliage, the leaves were just as beautiful, like dark purpley, browny and green. And then this most exquisite flower with the most lovely fragrance mm -hmm. would come out and it would perfume the night air, the morning air, right throughout the Easter period. Are there any other flowers that were associated with Easter? Well, I don't know if you can call this flowers, but I'll call it plant. Well, flowers, yes. We have the cup and saucer lily and mm -hmm. the candy lily. Don't know if you know our good old broom weed. Oh, certainly. I used to weed them as a child. And I used to take them sweep up the yard. Uh -huh. Well, it is said, Miss Lewin, that mm -hmm. if you dig at the root of the broom weed and you find charcoal, yes. good luck, because you have found some of the cross, oh. the remains, the remnants of the cross. Is that so? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then there's another tree. This, this one has to do with... I'm right. certain that's what you're uh -huh. going to tell me. Uh -huh. The physic not now, it is said that if you cut that tree at noon, on Good Friday, mm -hmm. you are going to see that the sap in it is red and that is signifying the blood. They have traditions about food and eating and so on. Did you have any in Northern Clarendon? Of course, a regular bun and cheese, of oh, course. Uh -huh. Or could uh -huh. you forget the bun and cheese? Of course. <laughs> uh, well, fish, of course, played mm -hmm. a prominent role throughout mm -hmm. the Lenten season, of mm -hmm. course, around about that time. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of fruits um, at that time of the year were in, but nothing specific that I can remember. Mm -hmm. 
I think you weren't supposed to cook. Well, you were not time. supposed to light fire on Good Friday because uh -huh. if you did, then you would incur the wrath of the Spirit. However, you could wash a whole heap of clothes mm -hmm. because if you did that, the water would soothe the Spirit. I see. But you remember the egg white story as well? Yes, tell us. That is where you had to get a fresh egg. It had to be a fresh egg. Mm -hmm. It had to be a plain glass with water. You break this egg and you put the white in the glass mm -hmm. and you put it on a windowsill where the first morning sun could catch it or mm -hmm. the midday sun mm -hmm. and the egg white it would take the form of something and very often it was a boat or a plane mm -hmm. and that would signify your destiny. Easter meant uh, music in the church mm -hmm. and that was on Easter Sunday and Good Friday and that was regular church music and outside of that Easter Monday which was a holiday part of things when you had your picnics and your garden parties and your cricket matches mm -hmm. sometimes in the district where I'm from I don't think it happens much these days but you had some self-taught musicians my mother played the organ the one that you pedaled away yeah. for dear life yeah. and the banjo the guitar the comb all of that and people just gather just like we are here now mm -hmm. just about this time mm -hmm. and you sit and you start playing it could range anywhere from Jamaican folk songs to English songs like the Ash Grove. So that is, I think, in a nutshell, my recollections of Easter in the country. Yes. Thank you, Faye. The next chorus is masterly in its beauty and its conciseness. Two short sentences, five words that say it all about Peter's denial. Cock a crow, Peter gone. <laughs> The tune of our Easter and Resurrection Revival Chorus is based on the famous march that came out of the American fight against slavery. John Brown's body lies a mouldering in the grave. John Brown was actually executed for the part that he played in that movement. And the song that commemorates it has traveled the world in many different forms. We say, Come we go for Galilee, go tell all disciples that our Lord is risen today. Come we go for Galilee, go tell our disciples that our Lord is risen today. Oh, come we go for Galilee. Hallelujah, wonder where I'm gone, I'm gone at Galilee. 